Howdy y'all, Joe Hills here recording as I was doing Nashville, Tennessee. As you can tell, I've continued work on my wall off camera and I will probably continue to do so, but I did want to do some on camera discussion. Some of the things I'm kind of interested in trying to figure out. Like, this corner here, is this a freshwater pond? I'm guessing it's not. This looks like a seawater pond in, in like proximity to the sea. So like, maybe I should like, release some of this to let the water mingle with the ocean and then in, so in addition to doing the wall here like also kind of pop this out a bit like so and then like maybe it strikes me i should have the, the wall here actually come all the way down into the sea i'm figuring i should use the mossy blocks for that and and maybe even like where it's visible go a little bit deeper here like so so that means I might need to run and grab more vines, but on the whole, I think this is going to look better. Now, we are also going to have some issues with this kind of shelf here that juts out, because I don't want to cut into this for water reasons. Like, I like being able to take a boat and go under here. But I do need to figure out, like, ooh, are these, like, ponds? Is there a reason for these? Oh, it's because I had pumpkins here. But now that the pumpkins are placed, I can remove those. So, it might be wise to put half slabs underneath this, and then to support the half slabs with some sort of, like, pillars or posts here. So, if we started, like, here, and had that go all the way down, right, that might look nice. If that matches up. Oh, hey, it actually does. So, I don't want to, like, cut too heavily into the interior of the island here, but I do need to leave room. For like some sort of, I do need to have some sort of support here, or it's just gonna look wrong. This won't look right. Also, maybe this wall here should be entirely filled in as well. So, so this is more of a clearly a, a, a stone tunnel here. That might look good. But I'm gonna have to play with that a little bit and see how it turns out and how I like it. Now, another thing I can actually do is the soil on these doesn't have to stay soil all the way in, actually. I could possibly expand this channel a little further here and just kind of have the uh, stonework continue along this way, like so. Now that means I'm going to run out of these vine stones quicker, but I think it'll look nice, which has its uh, you know own uh, benefits. Also, I might only put the mossy bricks at the ones where it meets the water, or just above and not way down below because I'm not sure how well that shows through the water. Though that may depend on texture pack. Different people may have different experiences with that as they explore here. So, oh, and then there's this other inlet here. Whoa, did not mean to dive my face into the clay. It's most unfortunate for my face. Clay gets a lot out of it though. I do need to figure out like maybe some sort of support arch for this. Because, like, I think I want to leave this cave entrance. I've always liked it and never really covered it up. At that point, I could always have the shelf kind of safe to find this area, too, even, and having a little bit more farmland in the same way this shelf kind of cuts out. Although this was necessary because it defines the edge of the baseball. Oh, there's already a creeper spawning down there. That is maybe not the smartest thing I have ever done, riddled amongst the little bit of earth here um so how many bows and arrows do we have none bearing that in mind it's probably a good time to let him despawn while i run wait which way is he i've already lost the direction he'd be coming from right there while i run ahead and grab some more stone because even though it looks like i got plenty of stone here i'm actually gonna need a ton for this these stairs alone we're just going crazy through we're going we're, we're going through crazy fast a mad pace. So anyway, I'm going to put on my mad face and go into my mad base and get some glad stones. Dang it. That's... Mm. We'll come back to that. Time skip. Well, I've made some good progress over here on this wall, and I've been thinking about it. And with Wells Knights' base over there being this fancy dwarven thing, the logical idea here is that maybe an old farmer or somebody, like, hundreds of years ago paid the dwarves to construct this wall out of the stone from the mountains here. And now the wall should look way older than everything else in the farm. 
it should predate it like heavily. But the idea is that like this is farmland that is you know tributary to the dwarves or whatever, and that works in an interesting way. But what am I gonna do with all of these vines? All of these vines in so little time. I think I'd better hang these vines, hang these vines and make them mine. So that means I need a good place to hang them. For optimal vine growth, I think you want them hanging over open air because you can harvest multiple rows. But that might not necessarily be the case, and it's also getting dark. So let's real quickly examine our options here. So like one option would be like this. And then again, oh wait, that might interrupt it if it's touching. Whoops. Same problem. Dang it. This is how we get creepers. And I think vines grow regardless of, uh, what do you call it? Uh, daylight, but I'm not sure. I just want to have these kind of generally within my spawn range. So that way, or not spawn range, chunk load and distance or whatever. But without visually interfering too much with the farmhouse. So that way I'm going to grow some more vines in my free time. Great, see they're already growing. And let's go ahead and hop in bed and lay down our weary heads. Probably don't need to shoot fireworks off my roof. That's broadly unnecessary. Dang it, door. There are zombies out there. Okay. Away to bed and back to the wall. Come one, come all? I don't know. But yeah, I just, I've been thinking about it a lot. And, and the choice of materials for the wall. Old dwarven construction, I think, is actually the best way to, to really unify the area that dwells in my base is in. And I was thinking about maybe even adding some dwarvish ruins kind of in that pit underneath the base. I don't know what exactly I would want to do with that. And even maybe some dwarvish ruins kind of in the hillside here, like old outpost archery stands or something. I'd want to go investigate Wells's architectural style and kind of make it look like an older version of whatever he's doing. Because he's building like a dwarven kingdom in its heyday. And I want to build the remnants of an earlier predecessor kingdom. So I want them to be a little bit more crumbled and battered, but still be grand. And I want them to be kind of less ornate because logically the more ornamental elements might have been snapped off. Or this might have been a time when there were less resources. And I also don't want to steal Wells' thunder. You know, he's got a good thing going for him. And if I just come in and rip off his architectural style, that's going to look like I'm a Johnny-come-lately, not a Joey-come-nowy? No, that's what a kangaroo mama calls her kid. Um, no, that's what a goat mama calls her offspring. Anyway, I'm going to keep working on this, but I think there's a lot of opportunities here to do something interesting with pseudo-historical dwarven architecture that kind of unifies maybe not so neatly with the current architecture of the farm but with the idea that this is a modern farm built atop an ancient farm so anyway i'm gonna think on that a bit more and keep working time skip one of the best parts about working off camera on all of these things is i can come in and i can spend a little bit of time on this wall over here a little bit of time on this wall over here little bit of time over here and in the meantime kind of be taking care of stuff around the house you know maybe do some dishes this that the other and you know then I can go read some stories to my daughter you know bedtime yay bedtime everybody loves bedtime Joe Hills says now sleeping woohoo well the thing is if you forget to disconnect your Minecraft client you'll just be left standing out in a field and something will come and kill you and then you will lose your entire inventory full of bricks that you had set aside for the express purpose of building a really fancy wall. So let me tell you a few great things about losing everything that you had set aside to build a really fancy wall with. One, you get to wear your classic gear. You get to show off your gold and your silver that you might not normally get to wear. Second, you get to come back here and say, well, this video is going to be a little different than I was expecting. 
Luckily, I made some good progress on the wall in general, so I don't feel like I need to completely kind of discard the, the, the planned third act of this video, which was to kind of come around here in a boat. Oh, I forgot the boat because that was my inventory when I died. Okay, well, anyway, I had planned to kind of show you guys how I'm doing this. I figure I'll leave the sand kind of swept up against here, because uh, sometimes the way erosion works or whatever, like storms will bring in sand or silt or whatever on one side and deposit it while sweeping it away on the other. So we'll kind of have the wall along here not be so covered. And then over here, even, uh, dang it, less coverage. So... It's like more land was eaten away on this side. Yeah, let's go ahead and say hi to Impulse, because it is a good thing to do. And we'll even spell it right next time. Dang it. Okay. So, got a little bit of cracked brick. I ended up using most of the mossy brick more on this sewer part here. I like the way I got this arch to work. I feel like this kind of pulls all this together. The stone, for the most part, actually goes as deep as it goes until you hit soil there, although it's not super obvious when you're actually underwater, but from above the water there, it also kind of makes it look like it's reflecting some of the stone. I know it's not, it's showing the stone under the water, but that's that's good. So then that kind of leaves us with a few unanswered questions, like what am I gonna do right here? Oh, I'm missing a stair right there, but I'll, I'm missing all my stair blocks anyway, dang it. I wish so the problem is if you if you like die in a chunk and then you don't like click respawn or like notice because you walked away from the computer then then all of those things will despawn I don't even know exactly where I was standing when I was killed I know I was walking somewhere around the wall dang it but whatever anyway so we still need to figure out what we want to do with this maybe it's so strange having water flow like that from an ocean when I know physics-wise that shouldn't happen. But that's something we're going to reevaluate after we visit Wells' base. Also, I'm thinking maybe of adding a low-lying ruins or wreckage of an old fortress here. Like, with similar stone, maybe a fallen tower. But we need to do a, a tour of Wells' base before we do that. On the whole, though, this thing has come together, I believe, remarkably well. So, I've got that going for me. Let's see, is there anything else I want to do before we close out this episode? Hmm, I was going to fly up there, but I'm not going to have an Elytra anymore. And I'm going to be pretty low on food for a while. So, I might need to actually get some bread and all that together. But you know what, that's okay. So, let's go ahead and grab some bread. Oh, one last thing I do have to do. I do have to read a poem for one of our patrons who actually helped sponsor this episode. Thanks to him, there was no mid-roll ad today. So I'm going to get the bread that I need to not die. Then I'm going to find a place way up high that I can look down upon the fields from that might yet yield some good speakings or talkings or otherwise poemins. I don't know that poemin is a word in the way that rhyming or timing or limin is a word. What is limin? Is that like lemon in, 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 in? Maybe. But I'm not an expert in citrus. Anyway, we'll do a real poem in just a second. Time skip! So, today's episode was mid-roll free, thanks to the contributions of Doughboy91, who, at the $50 a month level, is entitled to the replacement of that ad with a poem at the end of the episode. Here is that poem that I have written myself... I don't think I've ever performed this one publicly. Might have mentioned a snippet of it on Twitter at some point. But otherwise, this is a completely new work. Something that I wrote a little while ago, and I'm sharing now with you for the first time. I saw an ad for this. I saw an app for that. French fries are available anytime. I can drive up, walk up, take out, eat in, or order a pizza instead. I don't want a pizza or French fries. I don't want House of, Game of, Orange is the New Dead. I'm dying of exposure to lights and sounds and tastes and pounds of cheese and bread unbreaking. Ice is all I want, and its freedom is metered. The city rations out the rink like it's fresh water on a lifeboat, sips of two-hour sessions two days a week, and if you can make them. And what they miss, what everyone misses, is that it's really just water on a floor. 
This is the moment of any time, and we can seize it together. If we flood enough warehouses abandoned, unheeded, the city will never find them all. I don't want to say it's like Uber for ice skating rinks, but the precedents they set will help us in court. So thank you once again to Doughboy91. Thank you to everyone who watched today. Thank you for everyone who will watch another day or has watched in the past. I'm just grateful for all the folks out there who don't even know my name. You know, it's a big old world we live in, and I'm glad to keep doing that. So anyway, until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring.